like I know your man just sitting there mm-hmm. cringing probably like what the what <laughs> you know, I cannot let go and blood and you name it was happening oh wow yes, it was bad his uncles who lived it was a duplex they lived it was a up down duplex they lived upstairs they come running down because they heard all the commotion they the grandma woke up and his mom woke up and they the mom and grandma couldn't pry my hands off of him it took his two uncles to pry my hands off of him oh wow yeah and so you he a, ended up having to go you are you a bad <laughs> i guess so. i guess that wasn't even, that wasn't even a thing then but yeah i was a bad that day <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so yeah. So um Wow. Yeah, there was some some a situ- that that situation occurred and mm-hmm. and you know, I wish I could say that that was the last time that we had an altercation. Um they became fewer, but it's not and you know, when the very last altercation when I was like this is over over is when you know, he had that dark demon look in his eyes and I will never forget that and I was like not today Satan and I grabbed a knife but his best friend was with him and came in and said dude are you crazy you are not doing nothing to shiny and got him out of my house and that was the last time we ever been together oh wow yeah. wow well good for you I, yeah but I thought about that like how detrimental would that have been if I would have used that knife how, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, it was just, it, it, it was getting, yeah, I could have been in jail. My children without a a mom, um, he could have died. Children without a dad, you know, and, and they're living in this world, you know, without parents. And I, you know, I think about that. So it was like, yeah, we, we really need to pay attention and care enough. If we can't care enough about ourselves, care enough about our children care enough about those around us to get the help we need and get out you know that that just made me think of something i think that's really important for people to know is that you know you see this stuff on tv on cops and you know the uh whatever that tv show was on a and e for a while um where they followed them around oh yeah and you know they talk about you know going to catch bad guys and all of that And then Mm -hmm. you hear a story like yours and you realize that it's not that you were a bad person. And I mean, honestly, it comes down to choices. And at any given moment, we can choose what road we want to take. And if you choose the wrong one, you end up being called a bad person by the law law enforcement and other people. But I, I think that's a stigma that is incorrect because it doesn't you were not a bad person in that moment necessarily, you know, for right. wanting to to do what you, whatever you were about to do, uh, but you made the right choice in not doing it and holding back and, you know, getting some self-control. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, it I, just, like, yeah, I just think the right a, choice was made for me too, if you think about it, because like I said, the best friend came Well, in. yeah, that's true too, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like you said, no, I never, like, I don't consider myself a killer. I don't consider myself a fighter. I don't fight. I don't go out here. Hey, I'm going to beat somebody. I don't do that. But I do protect myself. I do defend myself. And as a human, as a, that's our natural instinct. But think how detrimental it can be. You know, and, and the choice should have been made a long time ago to not be in that situation, to leave that situation because it really wasn't a relationship. There was nothing healthy about it. Well, that and, you know, too, that goes back to what I'm what we're here to talk about. And if he was acting as a good man doing what he should have been doing, the United never would have had those problems in the first place. Exactly. And, you know, and the problem is he had trauma, right? Mm-hmm. Un, unresolved, unhealed trauma. So and that's the whole thing. People need to understand these men and women are not born abusers. And it took me a long time to understand that. It took a long time to accept that. They're not, we're, yeah. People aren't born bad. Yeah, that's true. Experiences, life experiences have made them bad, so to speak, if mm-hmm. that's the word we want to use. Yeah. And, that's, and when we don't go and face those traumatic experiences and get the healing that we need, 
you end up acting out in, in violence, abuse, or whether it be physical, mental, emotional, psycho, you know, psychological. And then you have these other names, narcissist. That you get that title, you get all this stuff, mm -hmm. and all you have to do is go seek the help that you truly need. Yeah. And people, and people won't, and they don't. I think it's that there's still a lot of stigma around it. I think in a lot of circles that. You know, it if, is. if you need help, there's you know there's something wrong with you, and it's and I mean maybe that's you could say there's something wrong with you, but that doesn't mean it's bad. And going to get help is actually the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do, and, and I'll you know <coughs> being an African in the African American community, being an African American woman, it's a huge stigma on mental health. Getting getting help with your really? with your mental huge. Hmm. I didn't know that. And and if you if you do some research, I'm about to go into Black history. It's it's due to um, majority of our ancestors worshipped in a different way until slavery, right? Worshipped idols, worshipped um, by building fire, you name it, right? Um, so once Christianity took over in the African American community, if you if you seem to have any type of something wrong with you you're worshiping a devil or a devil is within you or whatever the case may be so that's it's, it's ugly history but we need to come out of that history and say you know what mental illness is real y'all if you had any kind of life you probably experienced some not so great things and your mental didn't handle it well so let's go get it taken care of yeah that no. There's and not a single one of us that will get out of this life without being damaged in at least some way, shape, or form. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Trauma happens at every turn. Every turn. It's, it's, it's all in how we handle it, really. And it is. I mean, and if some you people can't are lucky, handle it yourself, but... yeah. If you can't handle it yourself, like if you're not one of them lucky people that can't really get through it, overcome it, go mm -hmm. get the help. <laughs> Yes. Please. Yes. You know? I mean, even if it's reading Chicken Soup for the Soul or, you know. Exactly. Whatever it takes. Any self-help books or a dime a dozen. Exactly. So. And now you don't even have to read. You can get books on te or audio, right? Yeah, you true, get right? audio. <laughs> so come on now. It's, it's really no excuses nowadays. Right. Exactly. You can listen to a YouTube. You can listen to the, a podcast by Aaron. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. Shameless plug. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> excellent. So, you know, I think the uh, the important thing that one of the important things I think that you're trying to drive home too is that finding a way to realize either that you're in a situation that's bad that you need to get out of or that you are the perpetrator of a situation that's bad that you need to stop or change um you know it, it takes some sort of a catalyst or some sort of a epiphany for people and it sounds like for you that, that your children were were that yeah. that epiphany for you yeah i looked at those children and and after that particular incident i was like i actually went further than that like I started thinking oh my gosh if I stayed in that I would have lost one of them if not both because they can be some hot hits <laughs> they would have my son or my daughter probably would have took their dad out of here you know and or you know so I I went way in because they were little when I you know had that vision mm -hmm. and I was like oh no Oh no, not no, not now, not never. And that really woke me up. It's like, yeah, this, that's it, that's it. Yeah, that's good. And yeah, it's it's funny how children can be such a great motivational tool for change. They are, they are. <laughs> they, um, I love all of my children. I don't know if I had shared with you, but my husband and I, we have eight together. But the two that I birthed uh, prior to. Uh, getting with my husband, my two, they helped me through so much. They helped me to live, you know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and to have a purpose, you know? And then of course, after we blended our families and we have a child together, my three that I birthed and then my other babies, um, 
they I had I looked at all of them I wanted them to know that they can do anything so I went back to school and got my uh, bachelor's and went and got my master's as an adult and just said you guys it could be done it could be done nothing mm -hmm. you only person that stops you from doing what you need to do is you absolutely yeah we are our biggest our biggest enemy and the hardest mm -hmm. battles we will ever fight are within the five inches between our ears that's so true <laughs> that's so good i never heard that before but that's such so it's a yeah i think it's part of an old golf saying that you know golf is played within the five inches between your ears so mm. i just oh. kind of take that and apply it to the rest of my life because it's absolutely true it is true i yeah. love that so um i guess want to go on now i guess and talk about um your book that you wrote and what that was about and how that came about and details behind that all right yeah so the name of my book is well i have two but the first book that i wrote is living with loss a mother's love how to endure the seven stages of grief um that book came about because in january 3rd of 2018 i lost a daughter lynn and i lost a daughter um patrice is her name um, Patrice was killed, gun violence. Uh, her and her boyfriend were f fighting, uh, struggling over a gun, and the gun went off on her. So, um, needless to say, I, I did not handle things <coughs> in a healthy way at all when it came to losing her. Mm. I, you know, I wanted to be with her. I was done with life. Like, how how is this even possible that we have a child that we had, to, we didn't bury her, we cremated her, that, but we had to say goodbye to. The plan was always they're going to they're gonna bury us or, you know, cremate us or say goodbye to us first. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so it was just so out of order, right? But um, I went through some things. Very, I'm a very spiritual person. I love the Lord. I am a Christian. But I went through some things, and at the end of, of it all, it came out that um, I was just so angry with God. I was truly angry with God. So that I had to say that. And I don't know if you know much about the black community, but you just don't ever say anything negative about God. Uh, you just don't. <laughs> <laughs> that will get you the beat down to beat down. Mm -hmm. So I was holding on to all that, like not being able to be real. But once I really allowed that emotion to display, I, the healing began. I was trying to kill myself with food. Um, so I was eating anything and everything that was unhealthy, that was bad for you. So once I was able to really get real with my emotions, then I was able to detox. Then I was able to get clarity. Then I was able to write this and healing happened. And um, grief is ongoing. I, I wish I could say, oh, I'm healed. No, I have emotions that have been healed, but grief is everlasting. Mm. I have my moments, but I know how to handle it in a healthy way now. I don't go and try to eat up everything under the sun or hide in my room, not come out for days, you know, weeks, months. I did that I, for a year and a half. I was pretty much gone. Mm. I tried to fake it, but I couldn't even fake it well. It was right. horrible. I can't so, even imagine. Uh, yeah, it's not something I want anyone to ever experience. But unfortunately, it's happening more and more. Our children are leaving us before, you know, before we're ready for them to, because we're never ready for our child to leave. Um, I thought I was pretty okay with grief because I lost my mom like 20 some years ago. And I lost the grandpa, the grandpa that was my hero, you know, some years ago. But there's nothing like losing a child nothing yeah i can't, and I that, can't imagine <clears throat> yeah it, it's, I, it's the worst heartbreak ever i hope i never have to find out and i'm praying you don't either yeah I, yeah you know not to take away from from your story here well i definitely want to hear more about it um just to but just to cue in from what i've seen on how bad it is and how amazing a strong woman is my aunt lost her husband to cancer and like within three months of being diagnosed and then just a few years later lost her son to a drug relapse 